G'day everyone, it's a grey day, it's a dull and damp afternoon and I'm going walking up one of my favourite trout streams to see if I can catch a trout. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Right now I had quite a bit of success in this stream back in the springtime in September, October. I haven't been back since around October so it'll be interesting to see how it fishes now. I'm starting off with this little minnow. This is the Damiki Era 55 that turned up in the uh, in the March Tackle Club box. I'll start with that and I've got a, uh, a variety of different minnows and soft plastics to use and I've also bought some worms and some small hooks because we've had about an inch of rain and it's been raining for a few days so I'm uh, equipped for all scenarios. Let's go and see if we can catch some fish. Well, the stream doesn't seem to be too dirty. It's got a bit of colour in it but it looks quite clear actually. There's certainly a healthy flow of water. Nice casting of it. Let's follow. Oh, we hit it and turned around. That's a strike. Second fish. You didn't see the first fish because I wasn't filming. I hooked a little one about probably 15 centimetres long. He jumped out of the water and I said, got him. And then he got off as quick as he hooked up. Here comes one. Go oh, hit it. I'm going to pause it. He's following it. Go oh, he hit it again. Come on, this spot's got a hold of fish. Nice cast, Robbie. Oh yes, got him right near the end. Right, hopefully I'm filming this time and you get to see this. Hopefully I'm filming and you get to see that one get away. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, I'm finding fish. That's the main thing. They're willing. They're willing. So it's only a matter of time before I land one. Just before I forget to tell you, this little ERA 55 by Damiki, it's not actually available anywhere. I can't put a link to that in the description below like I often do. I just really, really like it. It's a uh, Tackle Club exclusive. Only the people that got the March Tackle Club box got them. So I'm sorry about that. It's a ripper lure and I can't, uh, I can't steer to anywhere where you can buy them. Oh, fish hit that. Oh, they're just not fully committing. Mm. Oh, look at this fish fly that down in the rapids then. Jeez, the old grey day's not getting any brighter. <laughs> it's, uh, the rain's just getting steadier and steadier. I'm getting drenched. I don't care. One of my favourite sayings is that some people like to walk in the rain, other people just get wet. <laughs> Here comes one. He's on it. No, he didn't hit it. It wasn't real big, probably only 15 or 16 centimetres. He followed it down and had a look at it and never even struck at it. How good is this? It's actually, there's a certain peace to be found when it's raining steadily like this. Just standing in the rain. I don't know, I find it peaceful. Provided it's not bitterly cold, I find it peaceful. He comes like, oh, there was a fish following that then, but he wouldn't hit it. They're definitely lure shy. Got him. Oh, look at this tiny little fish. Please don't get off, I've got to land at least one. Have I fail hooked him? Oh no, he's hooked in the mouth. What have we got? A tiny weeny little brown trout. Look at that, I finally landed one. I've had lots of follows. I've caught fish like that before. See, he's got that bit of his gill missing. I don't know what causes that. I've caught carp like it. I think I've caught Murray cod like it. Lovely fish. See you later, mate. Nobody can complain that I didn't wet my hand. I did dip it in the water, but I didn't need to because Everything's wet. <laughs> if you go out in the rain, I finally calls a follow. Another little one about the same size followed it in then. Oh, big one. Take it, take it. He's all got him. Yeah, when I say bigger one, he, 
Well, big one is bigger than the one I just caught, is what I meant to expect there. Alright. Oh, look, I've cooked him in the... Mate, you cook yourself in the ass. I've cooked him in the tail and the mouth. I'll get the, the ass bit off first. Alright. Don't kick a little bigger cribbles than me. There we go, folks. Lapsized. Lovely brown trout. See you later, champion. Had quite a few follows. I've hooked a few, missed a few, lost a few. And I've just hooked two in about five minutes. Naughty. Who's the follow? Pause, pause. I didn't even get to see the fish. The camera might have picked that up, I don't know. I haven't got Polaroids on. The camera has. I'm just going to cast it into the back half of the hole. That way if I hook a fish, looks like I've got to follow. Oh, we hit it! If I hook him and lose him, all the disturbance stays down the back half of the hole and I don't spook the entire pool. And that gives me a greater chance of catching a fish at the top of the hole as well. The best outcome is to catch a fish at the top and the bottom. The most likely outcome is I probably won't catch a fish at all. <laughs> he might have moved upstream a bit, I think. Start going a little bit further up now. There's a little weenie fish fired that out then. Before you follow, you hit it. Oh, he tapped it. And again, he's following it. Every time I pause it, he has a bit of a dip. Oh, there he is. He was right on it. He was right on it. What I'm finding is that the trout are hitting it in the faster water, but they haven't got as much time to study it. But as soon as the lure gets into the slower water, they can follow it and study it a lot more. He's following it now, I can see the waves. I might throw a soft plastic on it, just something a bit more natural looking. See if that can uh, turn this following fish into a striking fish. Now it doesn't get much more natural looking than the strike tiger nymph in this coffee colour. I'm not expecting to catch this fish on it. He's, uh, he's pretty well educated, I think, this fish now. He's got his, his smarts are all dialed in. Oh, he had a hit, he was one there, he hit it. Taking me a bit to get used to casting this little nymph. There's still a fish at that thing. Oh, something hit that. Oh, something hit that. Oh, he followed it out too. Just spooked the fish, bugger it. fish under this log just here. I'm hoping that he doesn't go up that way and spook this pool. Go downstream you silly bugger. He's stuck in that little bit. There he goes. He's gone straight up into the hole I didn't want him to go into. Oh see that trout just jumped clean out of the water. I wonder what he was after. I wonder if he'll find, oh he hit it, I wonder if he'll find my nymph, but he did. He just nudged it. Tiny little brown trout it was. I think they're all brown trout in this stream to be honest. Just changing lures, but you see that, that little red fin looking plastic? That's Andy Marshalls. <laughs> You've seen my friend Andy in a few of my videos. I lent him a striped tiger the other day, so he put his in my tackle box and now it lives there. Alright folks, so I've gone back to the minnow. The minnow seem to be enticing a lot more strikes than what the soft plastic was today. I've gone to a Pontoon 21 Crackjack 48mm, one of my all-time favourite uh, favorite trout minnows. I've actually had this one for about 10 or 12 years. It is a ripper. Oh, got him. Oh, oh, he's a nice fish too. He's bigger than the other one that I caught before. Didn't hit it very hard though. And he just tapped it and put the hooks in his mouth and then uh, didn't let go. Mm. 
Yeah. Nice little run there. He comes on. Ooh, got him. He hit it at the last minute. Right. Lovely Bernie. Come on, buddy. He's in a much better condition, much better bar, in much better shape than the last one. I'm going to drop him. One of the things you've got to be careful of when you're holding a fish with uh, a minnow, because it's got treble hooks, if they kick, sometimes it's easier just to drop them back in the water and risk them getting off. It's a much bar. That's a much better outcome than having the hook stuck in your fingers. Ah! I just took the GoPro off my head to get a close up and he, uh, he took off before I had a chance. <laughs> Guilty! We'll take it. He's, he's under it. He wants it. There's a little one under it. He was keen, but I ran out of room. I ran out of room. Got him. This one was keen too. Lovely fish. For a moment there I thought that was a rainbow. I haven't seen a rainbow trout in this creek since I was a kid. That was a long time ago. Here's the fish of the day. Here's the fish of the day, folks. I'll get a bit of a close-up with me GoPro. No, I won't. <laughs> I'll try that again. I've got a bit of a close-up with me GoPro. Look at that. Lovely fish. Now I'll put him back in the water and then I'll uh, unhook him. There we go, lovely brown trout. See you later, buddy. Oh, we took off. Here's the nicest, here's the fish of the day, I reckon, that one. Oh, Crackjack 48, eh? This was catching me nice fish back in about 2010. So I've probably had that lure 10 years. We had a flood year in 2010. I remember using it after that flood. So I've had this very lure for about 10 years. Now I'm going to put a link in the video description below this video to where you can buy these lures. The Stry Tiger ones you can buy. These I think are still available, the Crackjack 48. But the first one that I use, the Domeki, you can't get them. They're exclusive to Tackle Club. But just because these you can still get doesn't mean they're in stock. Getting a number of people lately contacting me saying I've gone to I've clicked on the link in your video description to buy a lure, but they're out of stock. That is a big problem with all tackle companies at the moment. Due to COVID being so rampant in the Northern Hemisphere, so many companies just cannot get stock. Even my recent Olight video, originally I was meant to film the light and the little plastic pouch, the charging pouch. They got the lights done, but they couldn't get the pouches in in time. They came, they arrived the day of the sale, which gave me no time to add them in my video. It's just a problem in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. COVID is running rampant. It's a, it's a hell of a mess. And all tackle companies are having trouble getting stock. But whether they're in stock or out of stock, I'll still put the link there anyway, because hopefully down the line, they will be in stock again. And the link will work. I went to Hungry Jack's in Wangaratta last night, and while I was there, the entire store had to be evacuated. You know why? Because somebody dropped the Whopper. <laughs> oh, something hit me, Lua. He's on it! Oh! Someone dropped the whopper, isn't it terrible? Ooh, where'd he come from? <laughs> I ran out of room. Hopefully he hasn't seen me and he comes back. Here he comes. He's looking at it. Oh, he swiped it. No, I think he's, uh, he ran over to the right there. I saw him go over under all those, those branches and stuff over there. Oh, this is a dodgy cast if I ever made one. A fish came up under that then. That was very much uh, across that bridge when I get to what type of fishing. Got him! Now I've got to cross that bridge. <laughs> it's like, what do I do if I hook one? Across that bridge when I get to it. He's still on there too. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten off. Uh, across that bridge when we get to it, he says, here we go, here we go, oh, look at that, oh, he got off, oh, no, he landed on the stick, and mate, I can still see you, I'll try and get you back in, you know, you've done yourself a mischief, he 
There it goes. <laughs> That's as good as caught. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Next minute, I'm on that bridge. That's some fresh Samba deer poo right there. There's a follow. He's on it, he's on it. Pause, pause, pause it. Oh, I don't know where he went. Whoa. There's a fish here that wants that. There's a fish here that wants that. Take it now, I'm dangling it. Look, he's under it. He's under it. I'm dangling it over this reed. There's one, got him. Oh, lovely trout. Come here, buddy. I'll see if I can get a, uh, a close-up of you with my GoPro. Every time I've tried that today, they seem to get off. There you go, folks. Lovely little brown. All right, mate, back in the drink for a minute. One more. Here we go. See you later, mate. Beautiful. Having a blast. He hit it and I missed him. Didn't feel any weight, so I wonder whether he'll come back or not. He might. He might not either. <laughs> Here he comes, he did come back. Oh, he hit it again. Yeah, I felt a little bit of weight that time. He didn't hit it hard either. He just sort of nipped it. So I think he's, I think he's done and dusted. Be very surprised if he uh, has a game now. If I can cast into that little crack from way back here, oh, I'll be perfect. Oh, I got him, beautiful. Oh, got him, yes. Nice fish. Oh, it's the biggest fish today. Yeah, the fish of the day. I reckon. We'll get a good look at him in a second. Lovely fish. Lovely trout. Right, come on, mate. I'm being very careful how I land this one, and I'll tell you why, because I'm about to wind this trip up and I think I might take this one home for a feed. I don't do that very often on this channel, I think in the history of this channel I can only remember ever keeping one other trout. That was for a catch and cook. Mate, I'll euthanise you as quickly as I can because you're going home for a feed. Something a little different and I'm looking forward to it. Beauty! Well folks, that's it from me. I'm as wet as a shag, but I've had so much fun fishing in the rain today. I've kept one trout. He's not a monster, but he's going to be big enough to put in the frying pan. I don't keep him very often, but for some reason something in my head says, keep one for a feed, Robbie. <laughs> right, folks, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, why not give it a big fat thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.